So let's talk about another clinical scenario where buscopan can be used for symptom relief. So a really serious clinical scenario, bowel obstruction. Uh, so this is the name says is where the lumen of the bowel becomes obstructed and it can be the small bowel or it can be the large bowel, small bowel obstruction and large bowel obstruction respectively. And the thing that can cause this blockade can be a tumour or it could be a kink in the bowel which can then cause blockage uh, or it could be in the large bowel, it could be really bad constipation. It could become so hard uh, that it actually blocks the bowel. That's called fecal impaction when that occurs. And it can end up, you know, like rock-like uh, and immovable and then block the large bowel. So those are some examples of how bowel obstruction can occur. And then, of course, no contents can move past the obstruction. So everything backs up. And a big problem is that the contents within the bowel, it's very good at producing gas. So there are loads of bacteria that live inside all of our bowels and they break down material inside the bowel and release a lot of gas. Now, normally this obviously passes through and comes out as wind, but then if there's an obstruction, then that can't get out anymore. So the gas is just stuck in the bowel. So at, gradually the bowel blows up like a balloon inside of you. And this is a really horrific medical condition to behold bowel obstruction. People with it, they look pregnant because their tummy is so distended. It's really, really horrific. And when you take an abdominal x-ray, you see these huge dilated loops of bowel that are just full of gas. Now this, of course, is extremely painful, but it's also extremely dangerous. If it isn't resolved, eventually it will perforate the bowel. Contents will leak into the peritoneum, which will likely make the individual septic, which will potentially be fatal. Um, so to treat it, um, they will need an NG tube, so a tube going down their nose into their stomach, and then we can decompress at least somewhat the bowel by taking contents out of the stomach because what happens is as everything backs up the contents and the gas it will eventually end up in the stomach so it, everything moves backwards as the bowel gradually becomes more and more distended it's forced backwards by the pressure uh, so you can then uh, decompress the whole bowel by decompressing the stomach so you draw out gas and contents uh, liquid from the stomach and that helps to relieve the symptoms. But of course, ultimately you have to relieve the obstruction and that might require surgical intervention to relieve the obstruction. So what role does buscopan play here? Well, as in IBS, buscopan is certainly not going to cure bowel obstruction. However, it can be helpful in managing the symptoms, at least initially. So what symptoms are people going to be suffering with? Well, of course, they're going to be in a lot of abdominal pain and they're also going to be feeling extremely sick from the distension of their bowel and their stomach. Uh, and the last thing that you want to worsen all of this is for the bowel to be trying to writhe around in this condition. So by giving buscopan to these individuals, you can stop or at least reduce the stomach's motility and the bowel's motility. And this will help at least to relieve some of the pain and the nausea feeling that these individuals are suffering from. And thankfully, there is actually an intravenous formulation available. Of course, you wouldn't want to give these people anything orally because that's just going to be contributing to the problem because you don't want to be giving them a tablet because they're going to have to take it with a whole glass of water, which is going to go into their already um, full bowel. Uh, but there is an intravenous formulation available of buscopan, and that would be the formulation that we give in this scenario. So let's discuss through one final example of a clinical use of buscopan as an antispasmodic, and then we'll turn on to uh, its properties as an antisecretory. So this final example is useful because it's an example outside of the gastrointestinal tract. So, so far we have focused completely on the fact that it's going to relax the smooth muscle that lines parts of the gastrointestinal tract. However, as I've said, this word antispasmodic means that it relaxes smooth muscle all over the body. And there are other structures in the body outside of the gastrointestinal tract that also have smooth muscle and are also going to be relaxed by buscopan. And one of them that's clinically important is the gallbladder. So hopefully you know what the gallbladder is. If you don't, I advise you to Google pictures of it. It's a little spherical structure, a little sac that sits underneath the liver 
and it stores bile that the liver has made. So the liver makes bile, it goes into the gallbladder, and then what happens is when you eat a meal, in particular if you eat a fatty meal, that stimulates the gallbladder to contract, and it squirts the bile out down the bile duct into the duodenum, and that bile is then going to be mixed with the food that you've eaten, and it's very important in helping to break down and digest uh, fats and helps with their absorption as well. So it's an important part of digestion. Now, the wall of the gallbladder has within it smooth muscle cells. And again, these smooth muscle cells have muscarinic acetylcholine receptors on their surface. And the stimulation of those receptors stimulates activity within those smooth muscle cells. So taking buscopan, therefore, has a relaxing effect on those smooth muscle cells and reduces gallbladder motility and gallbladder contraction. So the next question is, well, why would you want to decrease contraction and motility of the gallbladder? Well, the answer is it's useful in individuals who are suffering from gallstones. So what are gallstones? Well, in most individuals, the gallbladder doesn't have any stones inside it. However, in some people, stones can form out of the bile and they then sit inside the gallbladder. And again, if you don't I haven't heard of this before. I do advise you to Google pictures of it. You'll see pictures of gallbladders that have been removed with the stones inside them. The proper medical term for gallstones is cholelithiasis. This is the full big medical diagnostic name that we use for the condition of having gallstones inside your gallbladder. Now, people who are particularly at risk of this are people, one, with a family history of gallstone formation, and two, obesity is a major risk factor for it. You're much more likely to have them if you're overweight than if you're thin. Now, gallstones cause problems because then when the gallbladder contracts after a big meal, those gallstones can actually dig into the contracting wall of the gallbladder and cause quite a lot of irritation and a lot of pain. So, Individuals with gallstone can suffer from a condition called biliary colic, which is where they get this upper abdominal pain, and it's in the right upper quadrant, so where the gallbladder is, and they get this horrible sort of pain after eating a meal, especially if the meal is fatty, and that's pain that can go on for, you know, half an hour to an hour after eating the meal, and it's because their gallbladder is contracting and is mobile, and is, the stones are irritating the wall of the gallbladder. So in these individuals with biliary colic, if they were to take buscopan, let's say 20 milligrams of buscopan, this would help to relieve the symptoms because it would relax down the wall of the gallbladder, stop it moving as much, and therefore the irritation from the stones would decrease also. And you might think, but then surely they're going to have problems with digesting because if you decrease the motility of the gallbladder, less contraction is going to take place, less bile is going to be squirted out into the duodenum, and therefore surely you're going to get problems with digestion. Well, the counter argument to that is one, these individuals are often obese, so issues with fat digestion and absorption are probably not going to cause them too many nutritional problems. Uh, and two, if you look at the anatomy of the way the gallbladder is set up, it isn't that the liver puts bile into the gallbladder and then the bile has to go from the gallbladder down the bile duct into the duodenum. When you actually look at the anatomy, the bile duct goes straight from the liver to the duodenum and then off the side of the bile duct comes the gallbladder. So actually the liver can secrete bile straight into the bile duct that can go down to the duodenum. So if you actually take away the gallbladder, it doesn't lead to problems with digestion of fat. And indeed, we do this all the time. Loads of people have their gallbladder removed. It doesn't lead to a problem. It's not an essential organ at all, the gallbladder. The liver can secrete bile directly into the bile duct and it goes down to the duodenum. So taking away a bit of bile duct contractility does not lead to significant problems. Finally, I'd just like to talk about cholecystitis because this is another situation in hospitals where we prescribe buscopan, probably intravenous buscopan again in this case. So cholecystitis is when the gallbladder becomes infected and this usually happens to individuals who already have pre-existing cholelithiasis, i.e. gallstones. So the presence of the stones makes the risk of getting an infection in the gallbladder much higher. However, it can happen to people even who don't have any gallstones. Uh, and it's a really nasty infection. It's treated with intravenous antibiotics uh, and again it causes horrific upper 
uh, right upper quadrant abdominal pain. And the role of buscopan in the treatment of cholecystitis is again in symptom relief. The inflammation from the infection in cholecystitis is going to really irritate and excite the smooth muscle cells and they're going to be contracting much more than they should be and that motility isn't going to help the person's pain at all it's going to make the pain worse uh, so again we can give them buscopan and we'll often give them intravenous buscopan because usually they're feeling very sick when they've got cholecystitis so they might not be able to keep down the oral tablet with the water that's needed to swallow it um, and that will reduce the motility of the gallbladder and it will help to reduce some of the pain that they're experiencing from it whilst the intravenous antibiotics are taking effect. So overall, um, buscopan can be useful for relieving the symptoms of both biliary colic and the pain from cholecystitis. It doesn't cure either of these conditions. The only cure for biliary colic is to have the gallbladder removed. And the only cure for cholecystitis is, well, actually there's two. Intravenous antibiotics will cure cholecystitis, but it may well recur if you don't remove the gallbladder. So the ultimate cure for cholecystitis also is to have the gallbladder removed.